Thank you for tuning in to the Island Treasures podcast. We value the insights shared by our guests and hosts, but it's important to note that their personal experiences are intended to inform and encourage, and not to replace professional, legal, or medical advice. With that, we are ready for today's exciting episode. Hi there, I'm Alison Van Shee, host of the Island Treasures podcast for caregivers. And in this segment, I will be sharing some nuggets of wisdom, or shall I say treasures, from the Island Treasures treasure chest. Today we're revisiting an episode from Season 2 entitled Growth in Caregiving, Healing Through Trauma, which features Lisa Kendall, who is a professional social worker who specializes in gerontology, and she's also a care partner. And we'll start today by defining care. Listen to Lisa Kendall explain. In the terms of the Eden Alternative, which is an international not-for-profit organization that I do volunteer work for and that I teach for sometimes, they talk about care as anything that helps another person to grow. And when we think about care this way, yeah, then we're looking at something larger than just treatment of the body. Then we're looking at the whole person. And when we think about care this way, we recognize that we all have something to give that can help other people to grow. And we all have things in our lives where we need to learn and grow ourselves so we can receive care. Calling yourself a caregiver can help you receive the tools and supports that you need. Take a listen to Lisa in this clip. I remember trying actively to get family members who were giving care to call themselves caregivers. The term used to mean professionals, home health aides, nurses, uh, other people who were paid to do care. Family members said, well, I'm not a caregiver. I'm just doing what any wife does, or I'm just doing what any daughter does. So we had to work hard back in the 80s to convince family members to take on that title so that we could get them to support groups, which we know are really helpful and wonderful for people. And so we could get them into workshops and and give them the tools and the support that they need. Now I'm kind of recognizing that when we sort of divide people into care receivers and caregivers, we lock people in with that language. Mm. And we can inadvertently lead people to a place if they're giving care that they say, All I'm doing is giving care. I never get taken care of myself or I'm giving, 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 and I just feel so burned out and emptied out. And then the people that I would meet with who were accepting care would say, my family won't let me do anything, or I can't do for my family what I used to be able to do, or I have nothing to offer anymore because I'm living with this injury or this illness and I have to receive care. So the language kind of locked people in. And when we talk about care partnership, we're really talking about a relationship where each person, and it's not necessarily two people, one person giving care and one person receiving and vice versa. It's really anybody on the care partner team, whether it's a family member, a neighbor, a pet, a clergy person, uh, somebody from the medical team. Uh, We look at care partnership as a place and a relationship where everybody has opportunities to give and everybody has opportunities for their own growth, no matter what the apparent limitations might be. Using the term care partners broadens the definition of caregiver and places the emphasis on relationship and the opportunities to grow for all those involved. But partnerships aren't always equitable. I don't feel like I'm a partner in that relationship. I'm doing everything. The person who's receiving care bucks me at every turn. It's awful. It's not a care partnership. And in my work, I do try to help the caregiver. I help them find a way to see the growth in the opportunity that's presented itself. That doesn't necessarily mean taking on the caregiving. Maybe the growth is for the first time in your life, you learn that it is okay to say no or to Mm -hmm. set a boundary or to speak your mind. 
and to realize that the person that might have terrorized you when you were tiny is not a threat now. That's really what trauma does to people. It makes people think that it's still happening if the trauma is unhealed. So yeah, it's a big issue. And and I just hope that people out there do recognize that they're not alone, that um, many people are giving care, they're choosing to give care, or sometimes they feel like they don't have a choice about it. But there are ways to take care of yourself and to grow in that situation and to get support for yourself. And what happens if the relationship is no longer existent? I like to tell a story about someone I knew. Their parent had been a person who lived with alcoholism and who had been abusive and had left the family when this person was just in the very young teens. Hadn't seen or heard from them in all these years, decades had gone on to create a successful life, a happy family, a nice home, a good job. And then one day out of the blue, as sometimes happens with caregiving, a hospital called and said, your parent is here. You need to come and get them and take them home. And this person was literally in tears talking about this situation and saying, I don't know this person. They were horrible. Um, I'm being asked to do something that I don't think I can do. I don't think I want to do it. And I feel like I'm 13 again. This just took an adult right back to some really horrendous memories. People do have a choice about whether or not to say yes to caregiving. It may take some real guidance and help from a gifted care manager or coach or therapist to help them figure out how to do that. But people can find their right place on the care partner team. And it's not always to just say, yes, I'll bring this parent back into my home, even though I don't know them and they hurt me terribly. So all people I think who are doing care deserve support to help them figure out what's the best way to do it or what's the right distance for them to do it from, but also to say no if they need to and to not feel guilty about that because these dysfunctional families are out there. If something Lisa spoke about strikes a chord for you and you'd like to reach out to her, her website is lisakendallconsulting.com. That concludes this treasure chest segment from the Island Treasures podcast for caregivers. If you want to send a text to the Island Treasures podcast about this episode, be sure to click the link in the show notes and watch for a reply in a future episode. Thank you for tuning in today. Take care.